All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined uh, by Paul Axtell, who is in Minneapolis today. How are you doing, Paul? I'm good. Thank you for the invitation to join you. Yeah, absolutely. And Paul provides consulting and effectiveness training to a wide variety of Fortune 500 companies, and he's also written uh, a lot of uh, a lot of books. He's written the book Meetings That Matter: Eight Powerful Strategies for Remarkable Conversations, Being Remarkable, and then a lot of stuff about how to talk to kids, how to create the relationships you want. Um, and you had the you 2012 uh, named best parenting book of 2012, translated into multiple languages. So, um, so Paul obviously really knows how to communicate effectively both to children and adults. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, your book about being remarkable and particularly how it pertains to people in business today and maybe our sales audience here that we have is how can people really stand out in today's kind of noisy, distracted world that we live in and how can you really strive to be remarkable? Well... It's a broad question. Um, I think one of the things is to hone in on one of the words that you mentioned, which is distracted. And you and I have to manage all the distractions that are out there, including devices. Um, you and I are just not at our best if we're distracted. There's residual distraction. Anytime you're interrupted, it holds on to us for 15 minutes. If you check your email, it lasts for another 15 minutes. If you go into a sales meeting, um, I worked with some previous sales, and I asked him, what did you take in to meet with a client? What do you put on the desk? And, well, they, well, we have all these brochures and things we're going to talk to and products. I says, well, you know what? As soon as you put that stuff on the desk, you don't have their attention. They're just waiting for you to get to what you brought. Mm -hmm. What if you just went in and put nothing on the table and said, hey, tell me how it's going? And let's find out what your reality is like. So distraction would be one thing that jumps out. I think there's two other things. One is perspective. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at, I've got a presentation coming up at, with 100 auditors. Right. And it's really how do you be great with people when you're with them? And if you think about, well, A, People like to be with people who are happy or have a positive attitude or a possibility-based attitude. Mm -hmm. People want to be with people who have the ability to be present when we're together. Right. We want to be with people who are interested in us as people. Mm -hmm. um, so that whole idea of perspective, what's the perspective that you and I have when we go into any conversation, whether it's with a client, whether it's with a friend, is pretty important. Mindy Hall is one of my favorite authors. She wrote the book about intentional leadership, I think. It's about intuitive versus intentional behavior. Right. With intuitive be what you and I do naturally, mm -hmm. intentional what we have to choose to do. Right. So she has a mantra, which is, I want it to matter that we met. Mm -hmm. Well, if you walked into every conversation with, I want you to leave our time together, feeling like that was a good use of my time, you'll be better with people. Yeah, for sure. So that would be one thing, perspective. And there are some very powerful perspectives to have in life. One is to treat everything like it matters. Another is to be responsible for it all. Uh, the other is to be responsible for your relationship, even if the other person's not putting in. And then right. the other would be, what are the things that are critical to being remarkable and putting your attention on things? So... It's about yeah. perspective. I also think conversation is basically all you've got to have life turn out. So you and I have got to master the ability to set up a conversation, conduct a conversation, mm -hmm. and then wrap it up. And if you think about sales, it's all about set up, have the conversation, and wrap it up. It's yes, it, it is. And I think uh, there's a few things that you touched on there that I want to come back on. Uh, uh, the distraction thing that we talked about, absolutely. I actually I get, I gave a talk the other day in Vienna, uh, in Austria. And that was one of the things I focused in on is like all of these devices, all of these things, they're not your friends when it comes to having 
a meaningful meeting with someone. They're narcissists. They're always looking for your attention. And they'll, if you put your phone down on the desk, you know, I guarantee you're going to glance at it during the meeting. So I think distraction is, is a huge thing. But I like this idea of being responsible because I think that's a thing that maybe is, has gone out of vogue to some de degree is that idea of taking personal responsibility and owning your part of whatever process you're in in this case you know maybe it's a sales interaction yeah and i think one of the reason it went out of vogue is that there is a pretty powerful model called focus on what you control and don't worry about that which you can't control mm -hmm. and that gave too much attention i think to okay what's within my control totally uh, but I like the word, if you look at the word, um, I like to draw a distinction between accountability and responsibility. Mm -hmm. Accountability can be assigned, you're accountable for these accounts, you're accountable for that part of the project. Responsibility cannot be assigned. Responsibility is a choice. It's a perspective. And think about it literally, able to respond. I've got something to say about how this turns out. Mm -hmm. So am I accountable for your experience in this conversation? No. But do I have a lot to say about your experience? Absolutely. Right. And who wouldn't want to give up being able to have influence over all the people around us? So it's like um, ownership might be a more powerful word than responsibility, and it hasn't been perhaps degraded as much as <laughs> responsibility has. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that 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 makes total sense, and I do. I, I totally agree with you. I think that um, because I think a lot of times, you know, people will go into you know into situations, and they've already maybe got a bunch of get out of jail free cards that they have in their back pocket, like to play at any stage. Well, yeah, he wasn't he wasn't interested. It was the wrong time. Yeah. It was this. It was that. Right. Yeah, I think that's right. I was talking with some young sales reps, and they were actually going to go into a technology company. And I said, well, how you – so you're doing these cold calls, and you go in. What's your thinking going in? And the thinking is these people don't really care about financial. They are very logical, so they're going to go through some process. And I said, you know what? You're just making all that stuff up. Mm -hmm. You have no idea who's sitting across the table from you. Why don't you just walk in and say, hey, you know, I'd love to work with you, but we might not be a good fit. So tell me your story. I'll tell you mine and we'll see if we can find some <laughs> passion between us. Yeah, that's that's a fascinating point, though, though, I think there is is our ability to pre uh, to presume or preempt an outcome or whatever or think that this is what's going to happen and inventing it, like you said, I mean, so in, in, in many ways, it would be just better if we went in, as you said, and said, you know, let's have a conversation and thought, you know, this is going to be a positive experience as opposed to maybe walking in and saying, I know I'm not going to get very far here. And guess what? If that's the attitude you go in with, that's the result you're going to get. Yeah, it's because you and I really are a product of our attitude or mm -hmm. perspective. And it's either empowering or not. And if it's disempowering, there's no tactical way to overcome that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if I walk in and say, hey, you know, I'm, people are interesting. I know you're interesting. I've got to figure out what – it'll always work. Yeah. So let's just come back to the idea of being remarkable because, you know, to some people, you, if maybe listening to this, you say, you say, you know, learn to be remarkable. They might say, well, you know, that sounds like a lot of hard work. You know, maybe, you know, if I just aim for being good-ish, it'll be all right. Why should you aim for being remarkable? Well, I, it is work. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about being remarkable at anything, it takes patience and persistence and practice, whether that's being a good putter or a good salesperson or a good presenter. Uh, so there is that part. Um, you know, I love Jeff Colvin's work about talent is overrated mm -hmm. because there are very few people who are naturally talented at anything. Right. And there are clearly the people who like to talk or in sales. Okay, but you know what? You can be really good at connecting with people, even if that's not your preference. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing, though, is human beings, I think, want to be good. They want – I saw a, uh, a guy who consults to retail businesses. Mm -hmm. 
And he was talking about sales has kind of gotten this whole commodity thing. But the customer, every customer wants to be unique, yep. and relevant, and curated to. That is personalized approach. And I thought, you know, that's pretty much, you know, you and I want to make a difference. We want to be unique and we want to be relevant. Yes. Yes. And we don't want to be just, uh, I guess we don't want to feel like that we're just numbers in a campaign or that I'm just going down through my list and saying, oh yeah, I'm calling on Paul next. Um, but I've done nothing to um, prepare for it or to customize it or to make it a special experience for you because I'm just playing the numbers game. Yeah, I, I think it's like, it's interesting, I've been talking a lot to millennials about mm -hmm how are you different? And they actually think they're more different than they are. But this whole thing about connecting, they have a couple of, number one, they have a rule of three. If there's six of us who are out for dinner, if three people are paying attention to who's speaking, the rest of us can check our devices. So they know that attention matters, but mm -hmm. as long as somebody else is doing it, I don't. <laughs> so it gets us back this responsibility. But they also have what's called the rule of seven, which is, if we don't get into something fascinating within seven minutes, then I'm free to leave this conversation or <laughs> not be fully in. So it's like, okay, we got seven minutes and we're uh -huh. either going to connect or we're not. So, um, but I don't think that's so for people. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't think so either. But that's a, it's, it's fascinating. It, those are, those are fascinating things. I must actually watch out for them now. I'm going to make a note of them. And anytime I'm around millennials, I'm going to see, I'm going to start talking and see after seven minutes if they're still interested. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, interesting. So you did a lot of work, obviously, writing about, um, you know, parents and children and, and those relationships. Is there anything that you discovered through that work? that you think is applicable to like a wider audience that's not so specific to just parents and children? Were there any great uh, lessons that came out of that work? Well, there's quite a few. Um, and basically, I'm saying you raise your kids with conversation. Right. A family is the set of conversation that are either empowering or not, and they're either no possibility-based or possibility-based. But there's something else that, uh, in fact, I just wrote... I have a weekly note that I send to folks called Family and Friends, and I just wrote the one that's about taking things personally. Mm -hmm. And in the latest version of the parenting book, we talked about how human beings are wired up to be defensive and to avoid being uncomfortable. We want to be liked. We take everything personally. Well, if you think about that, yeah, that runs teenagers crazy because mm -hmm. they want to be included, they want to be liked, you know, they post something, how many likes they get for something they post determines their self-worth or it could. Right. Well, that's you and me. We want to be liked. Mm -hmm. We take everything very personally. Sure. And if you're in the, if we just look back to sales, your ability to not be disrespected by being told no to is fundamental. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing human beings hate to be sold to why because that's uncomfortable right um so this whole understanding about human beings and how we're wired up to protect ourselves is pretty important i think pretty powerful yeah and it, it, it's interesting you should you should talk, you should say that because i was i was thinking and talking about that recently about how we have to be aware of how how we can get triggered by something in a conversation and how we can get very defensive and even physically almost defensive in a com uh, and mm -hmm. and it may and it, and it may be completely in our own minds like what whatever it is that you know that set us off but obviously in a sales situation that's not a really a good thing when you start to get defensive but it's often where a lot of sales people go wrong early on is because the minute something that they perceive as negative comes up, they go into defensive mode. Yeah, exactly. Well, we all do. Mm -hmm. um, which is why connecting and building a relationship before you get into that where mm -hmm. you might disagree is pretty powerful. I I have a couple of tip cards. So I am basically a trainer. And once in mm -hmm. a while, I'll have what I call prisoners, people who don't want to be in the audience. Right. And so I have two tips. The first one is, 
and when they look a certain way, like they don't want to be there, which might be, you know, you can try not to look at them or they'll <laughs> ask a question or that's clearly an attack. Yeah. You no, know, like, have you done research on this or how do you know that? <laughs> right. So my first tip is this is not about me. I'm taking it personally. It feels like it's about, but it is not about me. People are far too complicated. <laughs> This is, this is an upset that walked into this room ahead of me. And the second point, probably more important, is I do not have to react to this. Right. I can, I can respond in a way that I'm later going to like versus reacting in the moment and later regret what I said. Mm -hmm. Which, when you and I get defensive, we often say things that later on we wouldn't prefer to say. Yeah, and I think that's a, I think that's a great point. I like the first the the first part is um, it's almost like saying to yourself like, "Well, get over yourself." I don't have that kind of power to really, uh, you know, that person has got other stuff going on. It's yeah. not me. I'm not that. I'm not that uh, powerful. And you're right. The second piece is, um, you know, it's kind of biting your tongue a little bit and sort of saying, "Yeah, I could I could hit back immediately, or I could, you know, kind of deflect and move on." Yeah, well, there's a lot of things, if we stay with the last point, mm -hmm. will disappear if you don't take them on. Right. So if somebody says to you, well, how about this? Have you thought about that? Say, like, well, you know, good point. It's likely that if you take it on, that's where that conversation will stay. If you simply say, well, you know, I haven't thought about that and move on, it'll disappear. Yeah. Well, it's very hard to get into an argument if you don't actually engage, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I, I like that. So, um, Paul, in the in the last few moments uh, we have here, do you want to just tell people a little bit more about you and how they can learn more about you? Um, sure. Well, I have a website, which is just my name, paulaxdell.com. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. You can chase me down on LinkedIn. Uh, if you like articles about meetings, I've done 10 for the Harvard Business Review. Mm -hmm. So if you go to harvardhbr.org and search my name, you'll find it. Um, and you, I'm happy to talk with anybody that would like to interact with me. So you can just, uh, my email address is Paul Axtell at MAC, like Macintosh. And since I don't work in a company, I don't get that much email. I'd be happy to interact <laughs> with people directly. And if you're a millennial, he'll happily talk to you for longer than seven minutes and you'll, and you'll still want to listen. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, listen, thanks, Paul. This has been great. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. Another expert interview coming up really soon. Thank you.